5,000 subscribers. Hopefully more by the time you're watching this video, but who knows, with YouTube it could be a lot less. Thanks to everyone who has watched, subscribed, liked, disliked and commented. Without you, there wouldn't be much point in doing any of this. 5,000 subscribers? It is just a number, but I thought it would be a good point to take stock and see where we've come from, where we are and have a think about where we're going. So the first video I ever uploaded was back in 2009 for an iPhone app I'd made that let you take a photo of a Sudoku puzzle and play it. I followed that up with an augmented reality version. Now these are my two most successful videos in terms of views and audience retention. 88% and 74%. That's amazing numbers. If only I'd started YouTubing seriously back then. These videos were followed a year later by another mobile application. This was for a competition run by HP for their Palm Pre phones. Does anybody remember these phones? They were actually pretty nice. It's a shame they failed. This was a port of an iPhone game I'd made. I won a nicely specced out HP laptop for my efforts. Unfortunately, the game didn't last long as Atari threatened to sue, so the game had to come down. I then had a brief play with the Xbox Connect and hooked it up to a clone of Space Invaders I'd made. Now, after my previous brush with Atari, I can't help thinking that making a Space Invaders clone was a bit daft. Following that, we got a massive six year gap before I came back with a series on deploying Rails applications to the cloud. Now, I do have to apologise for any viewers who got interested in the channel back then, because we haven't really done anything on Rails or the cloud, and we kind of moved on to microcontrollers. Fast forward three years, and we hit lockdown in the UK. Working from home with no commute suddenly gives you a lot of spare time for projects, and after a couple of friends suggested putting them up on YouTube, I decided, why not, let's give it a go. The first set of videos were pretty shonky. I had no microphone, so the audio was terrible, and they are pretty hard to watch. Definitely not my best work. Since then though, we've been doing two to three videos a month. Hopefully they've been improving, but it is a learning experience, so there's definitely been a couple of shockers. Audio tutorials and projects seem to have been a big hit. It seems that everybody wants to do some kind of audio project on the ESP32. I really need to come back and revamp these videos, as I've learnt a lot over the last year and need to update all my sample code. Projects I'm particularly pleased with are the DIY Alexa, Marvin, tell me about life. and the voice controlled robot. Forward. Right. Forward. These let me do a bit of machine learning and I was able to run the trained models locally on the ESP32. These are also the projects that took the most amount of time. Training up machine learning models takes absolutely ages. Some hidden gems are the self-organizing LEDs, Though I did get hit with a copyright claim for using a few seconds of the opening music from 2001. I really need to be a bit more careful. I really liked the custom rotary encoder project. This worked amazingly well and really enhanced the Asteroids project. The augmented reality Sudoku solver is also a favourite of mine. This was a nice tribute to my old iPhone application. Going back to the laser projected asteroids, I really enjoyed building this and it was a great project, though it didn't generate quite as much interest as I thought it would. There's plenty of other great videos on the channel, have a look at the back catalogue and see what you think. Let me know in the comments what your favourite video is, if you have one of course. So that's the videos, but who is actually watching them? Who are you people anyway? Well, one thing that's disappointing is there aren't many girls in the audience. I guess this is a reflection of the world of tech in general, but there are some really amazing female makers out there who don't get the coverage they deserve. Age-wise, we've got quite a spread, though I'm not sure why there's no one under the age of 18. And it's nice to see that despite falling into some of the later categories myself, I am appealing to a younger audience. How do you do, fellow kids? What? In terms of where you all are, to a large extent this seems to follow language and internet penetration. Though we do have quite a good following in Germany. Canada, you need to up your game, and where is the rest of Europe? I know we've had Brexit and all that nonsense, but we're still part of the same continent. What else do you like to watch? There's not really any surprises there. 
you watch the same things that I watch. So that's pretty much all I know about you, though from the comments I get the impression that you are all really nice people. What else is interesting about YouTube? Let's move on to the more grubby area of money. How much does someone with 5,000 subscribers actually make? Have I quit my day job yet? Am I enjoying a luxury yacht? Or even better, have I hired a bunch of minions to make videos for me? Well, the short answer is no, no, and no. You don't start a YouTube channel to get rich. To get monetized on YouTube, you need 1,000 subscribers and you have to have accumulated 4,000 watch hours over the previous 12 months. This took me about 10 months to achieve. And since then, we've averaged about 50 to 60 pounds per month, which is about 70 to 80 dollars. It's not bad, but where I live, that's not even a cup of coffee a day. And it would probably only cover a couple of rounds of drinks if you went to the pub. However, combined with the sponsorship from the great folk at PCBWay, it just about covers the cost of components and software. Now, you may not have heard of PCBWay, but they offer PCB production, CNC and 3D printing, PCB assembly, and much, much more. They are great to deal with and offer excellent quality, service, and value for money. There's a link in the description. Now, I can't give you the exact number of PCB Way sponsorship, but take whatever number you're thinking of and halve it and then divide it by 10 and you'll probably get close. What software do I use for my videos? My main editing software is Final Cut Pro. I started off with iMovie, but thought I needed something more professional. I'm slowly becoming better at using Final Cut Pro, but it is a big bit of software. For producing the animations in my videos, I've got a terrible piece of software that I wrote myself. It's slightly bonkers. It has some JavaScript code that draws to a canvas in a web browser and then posts each frame to a Swift Mac application that writes each frame to a codec. I'm not sure how I ended up with such a Heath Robinson contraption, but it does work. I occasionally use Apple Motion, but this is a piece of software that I really struggle to understand. And I've also used the animation library from 3Blue1Brown, which is a great piece of software, but it also has quite a steep learning curve. So that's where we've been and where we are. What's next? Well, it's more videos, of course. Coming up, I've got a Teensy that I want to have a play with. I brought this to drive these nice galvos that someone sent me, but now I'm wondering if I should take a different route and investigate Parallel I Squared S as an option. But I still want to have a play with the Teensy to see what it's capable of. I want to revisit the Magic Mirror project and turn it into a proper smart mirror, one that would recognise you and say hello in the morning and show your calendar. I really need to revisit the audio world and do a complete guide to audio on the ESP32, and I need to go and update all my sample code. There's also a bunch of projects that have slowly failed over time. The flame lamp is currently out of commission with, with what is probably a broken connection somewhere, and the voice controlled robot has been scavenged for parts and is looking a bit sorry for itself. So, if you're a new viewer, why not help me get to 10,000 subscribers by hitting that button? And if you're a regular viewer already, I just want to thank you for making the channel a success and for all your comments and feedback over the past year or so. It's a great and friendly community, and I'm really happy to be part of it. So I'm going to stop now before I get emotional. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.